Let's talk a little about skin cancer. As I mentioned earlier, there are three big types of skin cancers with a precursor lesion called actinic keratosis, but the three big types of skin cancer are melanoma, squamous, and basal cell cancer. Some people say squamous, I say squamous, who knows? Now, let's start with melanoma. This is the one everyone fears. Not really a sun-associated cancer when you look at the data. So I want to start with this study when we're talking about melanoma. Skin cancer risk in outdoor workers, a European multicenter case control study. If you look here at the conclusions, you'll see that though outdoor workers had more risk behavior and they had less health literacy, they had more exposure, both occupational and leisure, and they had less sunscreen use, they had a higher risk of developing the sun-associated cancers, actinic keratosis, basal cell, and squamous, but they had no significantly increased risk of developing melanoma. So that is quite interesting. And it's important to note that this finding is corroborated many times in the literature. There is a lot of literature to suggest that there are perhaps multiple roads to melanoma, not all of which are related to the sun. Again, this study is called, Is There More Than One Road to Melanoma? It's a rapid review um, from The Lancet in 2004. Paradoxically, outdoor workers have a decreased risk of melanoma compared with indoor workers, <laughs> suggesting that chronic sunlight exposure can have a protective effect. So clearly getting burned when you were a kid is a bad thing. You don't want that to happen. But is melanoma truly a sun associated cancer? I would say no. I think that there is clear evidence that melanoma is not always associated with the sun. Epidemiologically, there's a lot of evidence that melanoma may actually be protected against if you are in the sun. And let's return to the paper that I teased you guys with at the beginning of the podcast, the melanoma and dietary lipids. Again, this is a paper from 1987. Um, and it is fascinating because there is this association, both an increase in linoleic acid in the triglycerides of subcutaneous adipose tissue. There's an increase in 10 years between 1975 and 1985. People are eating more seed oils. We know that. And the percentage of polyunsaturated fatty acids found to be higher in melanoma patients relative to controls. Really fascinating finding that brings up a lot of interesting conclusions or at least hypotheses that I think we need to examine with regard to melanoma. Is it possible that increased linoleic acid consumption could be causing fragility to cell membranes and that could be leading to oxidative damage in the sun leading to DNA damage and then more melanocytic nevi, precursor lesions or melanoma or could the same thing be happening with squamous and basal, I would say yes. It's not supported by the literature yet because there haven't been any studies looking at this. We need many more studies with linoleic acid. Let's loop a little bit back to omega-6 in um, melanoma and skin cancers. Again, this is mostly anecdotal beyond the adipose tissue studies that I showed you with melanoma, but these anecdotes are strong and I think the mechanisms are there. We need more research here. This is part of Tucker Goodrich's blog. Tucker's done a lot of research on omega-6 fatty acids. I've had him on the podcast, I believe, twice. This is his N equals one on omega-6 and sunburn. Can sunburn be reduced? And whenever I post about sunburn and omega-6 fatty acids or sunburn and seed oils, the response is overwhelming on whatever platform I do it. And so Tucker is saying excess omega-6 in the skin breaks down into toxins under UV blue light, uh, causes inflammation and cell death. I usually, he used to roast in 45 minutes. He spent last summer doing three to four hour runs in Texas. I don't know why he, was, why he was doing three to four hour runs in Texas. We'll have a conversation with him about chronic cardio. Hopefully he was four foot striking and not heel striking. Uh, Tucker might be in trouble on both of those aspects. I don't use any sunscreen, no burn. Again, this is Tucker's observations, but whenever I post about this again, anecdotally, I see tons of people chiming in and saying that there is a real, real correlation there between at least changing your diet to an animal-based diet, organs, meat, fruit, honey, raw dairy, and real sunlight, getting seed oils out of there and burning a lot less. So there's mechanistic probability there with these ox lambs from omega-6 fatty acids. We've seen all this other research with pregnancy and obesity, linoleic acids, uh, atheromas, oxidative stress markers, reducing linoleic acid reduces ox lambs, et cetera. In rats, it relates to cardiac dysfunction. The research with linoleic acid is very, very deep and uh, it's a, a very scary place to spend your time.